For those teachers who are starting the fall semester, teaching in the BA and ELT at the Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes, I uh, just want to welcome you and uh, give you a brief overview of some of the meetings that we're going to have getting started uh, this semester. First, I want to make sure that all of you have access to the academy. So if you go into Trabajo Colegiado, just make sure that you have access to our academy. And uh, this is what it looks like here. If for any reason you do not have access or it does not appear, make sure that you send me right away or send me an email and I'll make sure, I'll double check and uh, make sure that you're uh, added. Uh, I did double check this morning, but uh, just make sure that you reach out to me if for any reason it does not appear or if you're not able to get into our academy here in Trabajo Colegiado. So um, I want to uh, invite everyone uh, this week uh, to meet. Uh, I've, I'm designating a time 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay, so this will be July 29th and july 30th i'm sorry tomorrow july 30th 31st and august 1st okay so july 30th through august 1st 1 p.m to 2 p.m i'm designating time to meet with the academy to uh, discuss a few things that i'm going to talk about today uh it's not required that you attend all of those uh those days i'm trying to offer a variety of uh, days as to for us to meet and talk about basically your planning and some other things I want to talk about here today, performance tasks and so on. Um, so do try to meet one of those uh, days if you can. If for any reason you're not available any of those days, uh, let me know and we can schedule also a time to get together uh, according to your schedule. I typically come in at 7 and leave at 3 each day. I am taking a class uh, until the first day of our normal classes. I'm taking a class from 9 to 12, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I'm not going to be available between those times, but I'll be available before 9 o'clock a.m. and after uh, 12 until 3. All right, so uh, do reach out to me if for any reason you're not able to uh, meet during, uh, during the afternoon, 1 to 2, this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And... Um, yeah, so just let me know. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about here is the, let's see here, uh, the plagiarism policy. I'm going to, uh, I'm, right now I'm in the process of getting the most current booklet. Uh, the current link here is not uh, a good link here. So hopefully today or, or tomorrow I'll update this link to provide the updated booklet for our uh, BA program. But the idea is to review the plagiarism policy and making just make sure, regardless of the class that you're teaching in our academy, that we're familiar with the plagiarism policy and do it, we make sure that our learners are also available, are also uh, aware of the plagiarism policy. Okay, so this is something we can discuss if needed, if uh, clarification is needed. But basically, take a look at the 10 different types of plagiarism and um, make sure that uh, the idea with having such a policy is that we're consistent in the way in, in the expectations or the way that we expect our students to uh, meet this policy. So do make sure that you're uh, familiar with the policy and uh, this is something that we can discuss if uh, we need to clarify any aspect of the plagiarism policy, both in terms of what it is and also the sanctions, what we actually need to be doing if, uh, if uh, plagiarism is found uh, from our students. All right, uh, the next thing here that I want to talk about, here's a link uh, to the uh, digital library. Some of these links have been posted for some time in our uh, academy. But I do want to invite everyone to encourage your learners to use the digital library and uh, make sure that, uh, that we're familiar with the, uh, I would say, 15 to 16 databases more or less that are going to be most appropriate for our learners in our particular uh, bachelor's degree program. Of course, not all of these databases are going to be um, are used. They're not going to be really required from our students, but 
certainly we can find, I would say, 15 or so databases that are very much uh, useful that will be a help if uh, learners are looking for academic art articles. And if you are requiring your learners to uh, re write any type of academic essay, regardless of the, the course, I would recommend that you require to a certain degree certain articles that are coming from the digital library. Uh, I think uh, we have some really good uh, sources that we have available, and it's really important uh, throughout our BA that our learners are actually using these resources because, as we've seen in the past, if we don't use it, we lose it. If we don't use this very good resource, um, the tendency is to um, take it away. So again, let's try to use uh, the digital library as much as possible and limit uh, the, uh, the sources that we, our, st our students are finding online. Uh, try to limit, if not avoid entirely, websites, for example, um, and limit books and really try to uh, encourage our learners to use as many articles, academic articles, peer-reviewed, from peer-reviewed journals that uh, are possible through this a very good source, the digital library. Okay, so just kind of a, a reminder of this source. And uh, again, depending on the uh, course that you're teaching, uh, will determine to the degree in which this, this uh, source will be useful for your students. Okay, the next thing I wanted to review and talk about are performance tasks. And this is really one of the main topics that I want to talk about this week with you and when you're thinking about your, um, your, your planning of your classes and what kind of performance tasks that you're thinking about. This particular, um, this particular forum is for basically any type of assessments, if any type of instruments that you're using, any rubrics, checklists, observation sheets that, you're, that you might be using, um, any instruments that you use to evaluate your students, I would recommend that you upload those here. Now, of course, some of these that I've uploaded in the past, you might even use this as a point of reference. Whether you use these exact instruments or not, uh, I would upload the one that you plan on using and uh, in the same fashion that I've done here, so that we have a record, we have evidence in our academy that uh, we're using certain uh, instruments as a way to evaluate our, our students. So if you're using a, a rubric, for example, uh, an essay, uh, then by all means, uh, you're encouraged to upload this here as, uh, as, uh, as evidence. Now the performance tasks, there are different, um, there are different uh, sources and uh, different information here that I've uploaded over the, the years that you might find useful if you need a, a review of performance tasks. But just remember that a performance task for our purposes is not, uh, it's a slightly different than just your typical activity or uh, it's not a task that's going to last 20 minutes or even one class, but this is more of a deeper type of uh, performance that we're going to be expecting our students to complete that whereby other activities are going to end up leading up, will lead up to the ultimate performance task for, for our students. And there's a lot of resources here that I've uploaded in our academy. And I particularly like this grasp framework where you can kind of go through and consider these prompts for each of the elements of the GRASP framework when you're thinking about how you can uh, design your performance task that's most appropriate for your own particular teaching and learning context for, with your learners. So take a look at this. Um, and there's also a space here where you can add a discussion group. And if you're using um, if you're creating or using this uh, GRASP framework, you're encouraged to upload that and share that with others and uh, think about how, your, um, how you can use uh, this GRASP framework and how you can implement a performance test that's most appropriate for your class. This is an example here I've provided uh, to kind of guide you through. But just as a reminder, this prompt or these prompts that are included for each of these 
grass frameworks, the idea is that you choose one of these that are most appropriate. It's not necessary to fill out all of these prompts, but at least one prompt for each, you know, so if you have a goal, maybe you start off by saying, okay, the problem or challenge is, or maybe you start off by saying your task is, and remember that the goal, whoop, remember that the goal is uh, related to some sort of authentic task. It's not necessarily, in fact, it's not really a language goal, although we will have certain uh, linguistic goals for, for our particular performance tasks. This goal has to do with uh, the authentic goal that um, one would face in a real life context. So try to keep that in mind when you're thinking about the goal and you're framing the goal and working with your learners so that they see what the, the, the objective is uh, for, for doing that particular goal. Then we've got the role, audience, situation, product standards, and reflection. So take a look at this, and these are some things we can talk about in specific detail when you uh, are thinking about your own course that you're teaching this semester and how, perf how performance tasks uh, will uh, can be implemented uh, with your learners. Okay, and this is another source. I particularly like some of these handouts down here because uh, it provides additional information about performance tasks. And again, most of uh, our discussions about performance tasks is coming from the book Understandings by Understanding by Design from Wiggins and McTighe. I think the book was published in 2005. You can find much of the information online, and uh, there have been many books since the book, the original book, Understanding by Design. There have been many books that have been published uh, subsequently that talk about different aspects of really the same idea of how to reach deeper understandings. And let me see if I can get this open here. Okay, so this is, these, are, these are some examples of performance tasks and here you have the GRASP framework, so additional uh, examples if you need additional examples. In fact, here is the handout and different examples of uh, products and performances and roles. Okay, so just to kind of give you an idea of what to, to think about, let's look at this third one here. Again, all of this information is available in our academy, in, our, in Trabajo Colegiado. And this is just a PowerPoint presentation that I gave some years ago about performance tasks. So you can take a look at that when you have a few minutes. And so, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to cover. The last thing I, I do want to say is I would like to talk with everyone the first week of class. Okay, so today's July 29th. We have two more weeks before we start classes. So we begin on August 12th. And that first week, probably the 15th, we'll have our first meeting. And I would like to uh, talk to everyone about the possibility of a prope pro event that we did, much like what we did last year. I'd like to talk with everyone to see uh, what you thought went well from last year, what things we might consider doing differently to provide uh, a good experience for those students who are just entering into the university. And uh, generally speaking, I think the objective would be the same in the sense that we want to try to integrate as quickly as possible, both socially and academically, our uh, first semester learners into our BA program. So some way, some sort of event that will allow them to uh, use all of the things that they've learned in all of the different courses in prope during this event, I think would be uh, a good idea. And also find a way that we can integrate other learners from advanced classes and uh, bring them into the learning experience again much like we what we did last year i thought that was a, a i thought it, we did uh, a good job in in scheduling that as well but i want to kind of throw it out there and see if how everyone feels about doing something similar this year and what kind of event would work best for them as well so that's going to be our main objective for our first meeting and uh, probably the 15th of 
August. Again, the first week of, uh, of our classes, we'll schedule, we'll get together and uh, discuss that um, and any other issues we need to talk about. This week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're scheduling meetings from 1 to 2 p.m. If for any reason you're not able to attend, uh, see me and we can, um, we can schedule something outside of that particular schedule. But we're going to be in the in module three and we'll be in room nine okay so modulo tres aula nueve that's where we're going to be for our meetings for this week so again i welcome everyone for for this particular semester this fall semester 2019 and i look forward to getting started and we'll see everyone in uh, our meetings for this week